Welcome to Blue Talks. Have you ever thought what you would do if you had to leave your home? If you had to start over in a new country, you leave everything behind, everything that's familiar. Because you felt you had no other option. I was at work and I got a phone call from my daughter's daycare that her daycare was attacked in broad daylight. But that I shouldn't listen to the radio because she's okay. Just come and get her. You know how long it takes to drive 14 minutes to a daycare? It takes a lifetime because you don't know what's going to wait for you. I decided that was it. I am done. I am leaving my birth country, South Africa, because there was no future for my daughter and there was no future for me. We ended up in Texas, Christmas Eve. Crazy accents, right? <laughs> Culture shock. I did not expect to hear the accents that are so different, to see different sights, completely different to what I was used to. I was so naive. And I thought, I got this. I can do this. My daughter is safe. We are going to rock this. The whole family will be able to continue. And then I felt pregnant again. I didn't think I could, but I did. You know, it happens. And I thought, I don't know if I can love this baby as much as I loved the first one. Because I almost lost my first daughter, my firstborn. I almost wouldn't, I wasn't, it was close. I was almost not able to hold on to her. Because of other people. Because of AK-47's health against her head. And I thought, I'm pregnant now. This baby is here. What am I going to do? She got born. While I went through immigration, while we had to go through adversity, new accents, legalities, different way of life, different customs, and I couldn't understand my supervisors. Did I mention that? She got born, this beautiful little girl. And I thought, I love you. You are perfect. It is possible to love you as much as my firstborn, just in different ways. She was artistic, quiet, funny. I had no issues. Well, navigating, driving on the other side of the road and the steering wheel and the vehicles were on the opposite side of the vehicles and, you know, different foods and different people that I'm not used to. They play American football, not rugby. We moved to Canada and I thought, wow, I know, I got this. I am going to be the best immigrant ever because I'm doing it again. You know the biggest lesson though? Canada gets so cold. <laughs> I didn't know how we were going to su survive our first winter. How do you people live? The houses were cold. There wasn't a fireplace. And then my babysitter walked in and said, 
You want to turn into an icicle or what? Let me show you. And she showed me the little box on the wall. And you can adjust the temperature. It's actually a thing, central heating in Canada. But you know what? As we were struggling, going through all of these legalities, trying to fit into a new world once again, my funny, quiet, artistic little girl was being bullied. I didn't know that. As I crafted the connect concept for immigrants, I was losing my little girl. The connect concept, for those of you who want to know, it's for communication, open-minded, network, nurture, explore, and thrive. I used it in immigration, but I didn't know I would need it to save my daughter's life. Communication is about talking. But it's not just about the verbal communication, it's also about the non-verbal communication. Rolling of eyes from a teenager. I've done it many times to my own kids but also about what's not said. Her temper tantrums, her anger, her not wanting to go to school. She was telling me something and I didn't listen. I learned almost when it was too late that she was ready to end her life. Because I was so busy surviving in a new country, surviving as a mom, as a friend, as a wife, and I didn't listen to my little girl. I had to become open-minded. I had to understand that she could teach me. She could tell me what she felt like. She could talk to me, even if it's just by screaming at me. I have to be open-minded to talk to other parents and other teachers and counselors and doctors. I'm a very private person. It was tough. But I had to be open-minded to their advice. And then I realized that by networking, I created friends. I created a new family. I wasn't alone anymore. I don't know if those of you who have immigrated, how you know, how does it feel to be an immigrant? You're isolated. Your cultural isolation is real. You don't know where you fit in. You don't know where you belong. You don't know if anyone will ever understand you as an immigrant. I found I did have a support system after all. And that led me to the next step of nurturing. Did you know that we as human beings, we don't function if we are not nurtured. So how could I nurture my daughter if I didn't nurture myself? How could I show her the love and the respect and the attention she deserved if I couldn't even give that to myself? And once I realized that, I could start exploring the next step in the Connect framework. And I could talk about, let's go and find something that helps you. She wanted a cat. But you know what? The cat saved her life. The cat gave her that extra nurturing that I struggled with. Because I needed to be nurtured as well. 
And by exploring together, we also discovered that it's okay to get medication. It's okay to have a doctor tell you, you can use that, but you can die if you do take too much. But it's up to you to make that choice. It's up to us to decide, do we give up or do we explore new alternatives? Adversity, it's a terrible thing. If you don't take the courage and say, no more, I can do this. I can do this. Eventually, we moved on to the last step in the Connect framework, and that is to thrive. She is doing amazing. She's a tattoo artist today, a phenomenal artist. She's thriving. She is well, well changed. She became the girl I always dreamed she would be. But it was so, so close, so close. It came to a point where we found a letter that she was going to end it all. That letter changed my life. It doesn't take a lot to change your life if you allow it. Now, I could ask you, when you see a stranger, when you see a teen, a child, a mom, a friend, and they are struggling, can you introduce them to the connect concept? Can you help them work through these seven steps and ensure that they are safe, that they feel that they belong. You know, there are statistics, and in Canada, about 30% of businesses are started by immigrants. Of those 30%, about 75% of them are successful. Those businesses are actually started by the immigrants to help other immigrants. They always look out for each other because when you move to a new country, you need to start your own connections. Human experiences is what link us. We are together in this. But have we got used to living our lives in our home, in our apartment, are we so used to be just existing that we cannot connect to others? In the US, for example, about 25% of all public companies started by immigrants. And these are public companies backed by venture capital investors. Now, to give you an idea who they are, Google was started by immigrants. Yahoo, eBay, Intel. So that is a testament to the fact that we as immigrants, we don't just seek opportunities, we create them. Do we create them for our children? Do we create these opportunities for our neighbors, for our friends? Do we create these opportunities for ourselves? Because it's so easy to walk into a country and say, okay, I'm here, country. What are you going to give me? I am coming with my skills, my experiences. What are you showing me? Or do we walk into any company, any business, any community, and we say, what can I share with you? How can I today connect with you? Because we are human, we are fallible, we do have lives that are strived with all kinds of challenges. 
but we do connect. We will not survive without connection to other human beings. Helen Keller said it beautifully. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. I urge you, connect today. When you see someone, smile at them. When you drive, instead of yelling at that guy who went in front of you. It's okay. Because when we connect within ourselves, we have the courage to connect with other people. So please don't forget. Connect with yourself first and then take the courage to connect with others. I'm Irma Gusen and I'm an immigrant advocate for success.